Hey guys, I'm Chad. Welcome back to the Chad RC Models and More channel. Today is a very exciting day. I just got back. I passed my Part 107 examination and I've got some tips and suggestions uh, for you. I uh, wanted to first of all thank you for coming back to the channel. Let you know we got a lot more stuff coming up. I've got uh, some uh, more Phantom 4 Pro videos, Mavic, Leechy, <clears throat> and of course the DJI goggles um, and more run your own drone business stuff so please consider subscribing to the channel alright so let's talk about the 107 test as you can see I'm pretty kicked back and relaxed because it's finally over I scored at 88% um, got my notes here that basically means I got a 53 out of 60 so I had uh, 60 questions on my exam um, the exam was kinda easy yet kind of tricky you know how you, when you start taking a test and that first question just really hits you um, and kind of just sets the tone and the precedence for what's going to happen. You get kind of freaked out. It's kind of what happened to me, and it was one of the trick questions, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go over it here. But while all this is fresh in my mind here, um, I want to go over uh, some of the information. Real quick, um, as soon as I got done with my exam, literally as soon as the proctor was retrieving the information and printing out my certificate, the whole cat system crashed. There was actually a person in the room taking his 107 test at the same time. He started about a half hour later than I did, and he had to stop taking the test. And they basically, I don't know what, what the heck they had to do after that. So, wow, I really cut it that close. So, uh, that was real weird. So, anyway, let's start with the first tip. And I kind of learned this back in college. And the tip is don't think that you need a 70% to pass. Think of how many do you have to get right in order to get that 70% or how many can you miss. So basically I was in there doing the math and I had to basically get at least 43 out of 60 correct in order to get a 70%. So that means that I can miss 17 when I was going through the test and marking the individual ones that I had question, I had answered, but I wasn't 100% sure, I had 20 of those marked. So a third of the test questions was marked. So I was kind of sweating bullets a little bit. I mean, I was fairly confident that I had at least half of those correct. But what about the ones that I thought that I, had, I knew 100%? What if I actually flubbed a couple of those so you know that's the first tip second tip take your time you got two hours the environment that I was in at Ohio State was you know it was nice and cool in there uh, the chair was a little low the desk was a little low you know but that's just whatever it's not like taking it at home and practicing it's that weird kind of test environment but it was just cool being at the airport and seeing all of Ohio State's trainer planes there and these 18 and 19 year old students that are getting their bachelor's degrees in like um, aeronautical engineering and some of them were art majors I guess it's through the College of Arts and Science down there then that's how they become a pilot I don't know it's pretty weird um, so anyway let's talk uh, the second tip and that is the test prep that I did I watched Tony Northrup's video, Tony and Chelsea Northrup's uh, YouTube channel. I watched it a few times, and it's a little dated, I think, now, um, because it, you know, it is a couple months old, but the material is still uh, very relevant as far as helping you get to where you need to be, obviously, because it worked for me. Um, last night and this morning, I took the 3DR uh, prep test which I think was 110 or 115 questions. And I only missed like seven or eight out of the 100 and some questions. So I felt pretty confident. I also used the Prepware app on my iPhone. 
um, just when I was laying around on the couch or whatever, you know, for the past week or two. So all in all, five dollar investment. You know, do you need to spend the extra hundred bucks or something on one of the other online type of deals? I personally don't think so. Um, I think if you spend that money, it just makes you think that you have to put the work in um, because you've got more invested into it other than the 150 you already paid to take the test. But I guess it depends on what kind of uh, educator you are. I'd be interested to see if they go over the trick questions like I got on my exam because um, there's not a test pool generated. Um, eventually, maybe there will be. A friend of mine was going over, uh, we were talking about earlier, and he was talking about um, how the hand license uh, questions used to be randomized. But since it's a federal thing and it was federal domain, that eventually they had to release the whole test pool. I don't really know if that works the same way with the FAA and pilots and stuff like that. Because I don't really know if I would want an airline pilot being able to just memorize the answers to questions uh, and passing the test and thinking they're competent enough to fly. So anyway, third tip. Don't count on the gimme answers to get you through. Um... The reason why I say this is taking the 3DR test and taking the prepware test and everything, you kind of get lulled into a false sense of security on how many times do you answer the remote pilot in command or how many times do you answer uh, the visual observer. You know, out of a 60 question test on there, I probably answered that those two five to ten times for some of the answers. Um, I had like one of each out of my 60 questions today. Um, the same thing goes with the questions of latitude and longitude. Uh, there was usually 5 to 10 on like the 3DR, like find the airport, what's here, what's there. I had two latitude and longitude questions. Uh, attitudes. I had three attitude questions. I had the one about the TV station guy and the uh, impulse to... Uh, the impulse impulsivity as far as like go get the shot no matter what that type of deal um alcohol and drugs i had one question about alcohol one question about over-the-counter medications one question about uh, um dehydration i didn't have any questions about hyperventilation I had no questions about the airplane is coming in where at 45 degree at midfield, where's the airplane? I didn't have anything like that. I did have the one question as far as how do you enter a traffic pattern? And we'll get to that in a little bit. Weather and performance. I studied weather and performance a lot. I kept on getting the density altitude stuff kind of mixed up didn't even see it had five questions on weather and performance together <clears throat> looking at my notes by the way uh four tip uh the new gimmies is what what i'm calling them are your metar your taf questions and your sectional charts now it tells you on the breakdown of the test questions that you know, these are going to be worth 15 to 25 percent of the total test bank. So you could have up to basically 50 percent of your test could be based on METARs, TAF, sectional charts, and I think airspace as well. Uh, so you could actually probably bump that up a little bit more. I had probably five to seven METAR questions and probably 15 to 10 to 10 to 15, 16, 17 sectional chart questions and these were really gimme sectional chart questions that were that were what does uh the balloon mean and what is the altitude at this terrain and uh the military fly route question zero to 1400 uh, agl the um the METAR stuff again I mean, you got to know that stuff. That, that is where you need to get your points. It, you, you have to get your points in those kind of things because the trick questions in the airspace is going to be the stuff that's going to be the hardest. Um, my fifth tip is to 
save your wrong answers for the airspace and the tricks because there are a lot of trick questions on there just the different wording and how they rearrange things you really have to take your time and I think even though the questions were different than what I had been studying on the 3DR and on the Prepware app they were close enough to help me get by my sixth tip is use the key and the legend uh, I had to go back there a couple times to get a couple answers and just to verify like that <clears throat> the frequency is to the left of the C and you have to you know use the sectional chart uh, type of the, the supplement uh, airport supplement guide there was a couple questions on that so we'll go ahead and move on to tip number seven which is the weird questions and I didn't get to get my answers and I haven't even looked these up yet to see if I got them right or wrong but one of the weird questions I got was uh, the airport is usually in class D but then it closes for the night and the airspace turns in to class G so are you allowed to fly there or do you have to get permission to fly there I, I answered you don't need no authority because it says it turns into class G when the tower closes so I assume that one was right um, this other question I got I think I only saw once and I don't even know where it was but it basically the question was uh, you know unmanned aerial system uh, pilots uh, can fly uh, civil missions public missions or both and I think I answered civil. I don't know if that's right or not. You guys will have to check that out. Um, it could be both. I had both to start with, but I remember seeing this question once, and I think I saw it on another app that I purchased for like 30 bucks called Remote Pilot something um, in the App Store on iOS, but it had all of this stuff on there. It was, it was way beyond what we actually needed here. Um, the other question that was weird, you know, the bank at the bank angle and loading question, there was one of those, you know, and there's usually at least two or three of those on a practice test that I've taken. Uh, I had one of those, but then I had this trick question that went along with it, which was, what is the bank angle that drastically starts to affect load? Is it 15, 30, or 45 degrees? Um... If you look at the chart, you know, it kind of goes like that when it, when it starts to make a really steep turn at about 30 to 40 degrees. But, you know, when you, I just basically put 15 because I was erring on a side of caution, which seems to help you through a lot of these questions. If you think of the safest answer, nine times out of ten, you're probably going to be right. So, but I, like I said, I don't know if that's right or not, but that was uh, where at 15, it starts to deviate away from one. It goes to like 1.154 1 at what, 30 to get uh, 20 degrees or something like that. Um, one of the first questions that really got me, the very first one, was one about crew resource, crew resource management. And it was something that, it, they had it phrased in just a really weird way that I'd never seen before and it really got me so there was actually two questions like that that I got there was nothing about safety plans um, and then frequencies uh, what radio to call in because we're going to be flying in airports all the time and using two-way radios to communicate with <sighs> ultralights and everything else like that oh goodness but anyway I had like six or seven frequency questions on there as far as everything from the METAR frequency to the CTAF and then just everything else. So it's kind of all I got. Um, I guess the biggest takeaway is that if you study the basic material, you should be fine. Just mark your questions, go back through, don't overanalyze it, 
and just remember that if you have 60 questions, you only need to get 43 right. But also remember that all those gimmies that you're getting when you're just clicking on Rogue Pilot Command, Rogue Pilot Command, Latitude, Longitude, all the simple questions that are on that test, they were not on mine. They might be on yours, but I'm just saying to be prepared to be a little shocked. Um, you know, I don't I haven't seen anybody talk about I've seen one person on YouTube that said they failed and passed the second time. So on the 107 study group on Facebook, I've, no, I've seen nothing but success um, using these materials or using a paid material. So anyway, that is it, guys. Comment below. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Hopefully this helps some of you out. I just wanted to get this out there um, in case some of you guys are taking the test in the next week or so and you just want a little encouragement and you want a little bit more of a uh, feeling about uh, how things go. Oh, the other thing. Hopefully you stayed to watch the video. Remember these pilot handbooks that they give you are used over and over and over and over by who knows how many years, how old they are. But a couple of the charts, I had a hard time telling the difference between a dashed blue and a dashed magenta. So I couldn't tell if, you know, what the airspace was. I had to basically guess on one of the charts because it looked like it was blue, but it didn't really match the blue of the class B. And it was one of those questions where they usually throw a class E underneath a class B airspace and you have to kind of work that all out so I think I'm alright though I feel good, I'm, it's a big weight off my shoulders even though in actuality all I had to do was just go take it again but it cost me a day at work so I'd drive an hour away and all that other stuff so anyway guys that's it thanks for watching we'll see you later